One of our top stories this morning, a report by the Institute for Tourism and Recreation Research at the University of Montana, revealed this week that summer wildfires and the smoke that blanketed much of the state may have cost over $240 million in tourism dollars. Associate Director of the ITRR and economist Jeremy Sage said 2017 was headed for a banner year until summer fires took off. They spent three point. $36 billion overall. About a quarter of that was on gasoline and diesel, another 20% on restaurants, 13% on hotels. Our year total was about 12.5 million visitors to the state. Our summertime was about 47% of that total, so about 5.8 million visitors during the summer, which is July through September. One of the key feedback points from visitors is how much they appreciated the fact that hotels and motels provided information on where they could go to escape the wildfire smoke. Overall, they're quite positive about the response they get from Montanans and the, the hospitality that Montanans show them. There was a little bit of frustration from some of the smoke and the conditions that were all there, but many people felt that the service providers had a pretty solid understanding of where they could go to also get out of the smoke and still recreate in Montana. Travelers directly supported nearly $2.8 billion in economic activity for the state, almost 39,000 state jobs, as well as indirectly supporting an additional $1.9 billion in economic activity, more than 14,500 jobs. Missoula police responded to a serious two-vehicle accident on Phillips Street yesterday, which ended up damaging city infrastructure. Missoula Police Spokesman Travis Welsh explains. The primary resting place of the two vehicles involved was at the intersection of Phillips Street and Burns. It appears that uh, all occupants of the vehicles were transported to the hospital. Uh, however, at this point, it's unclear the extent of any injuries. It appears vehicles were traveling in opposite directions on Phillips, and at some point there was a kind of a sideswipe collision. The crash caused the intersection to be blocked off in all four directions. Damage is very heavy, so the impact uh, appears to have been pretty significant. As the impact occurred, at some point a city light pole was actually sheared off at the at the base and uh, was found laying on the boulevard there near the crash scene. Northwest Energy was on the scene very quickly and they took care of the down pole and also secured existing wires. No homes in the area lost power because of the crash. However, the street lights went out for several hours. Welsh said that none of the injuries were life-threatening. The Montana Supreme Court says government agencies must give details about whose privacy rights they're protecting when justifying closing a meeting to the public. The court ruled five to nothing yesterday. That would make that Tuesday that the Wolf Point School District Board of Trustees' explanation for closing a four-hour meeting before firing a school teacher in 2015 was insufficient. Teacher Christine Rapp had waived her right to privacy, but the board closed the meeting anyway and barred her from recording it. The board cited the privacy rights of unnamed individuals who were not in attendance. Justice Dirk Sandifer's opinion said there is no evidence that an outside individual provided any information and that a, quote, particularized showing, end quote, is needed to comply with Montana's open meeting laws. The court reversed a lower judge's ruling against Rapp and set the case back to the judge for further proceedings. Missoula's school resource officers underwent refresher training over spring break to hone their skills in dealing with incidents that may occur on high school campuses. Safety and Security Officer for School District 1, Mark Putty, said his officers have learned not to hesitate to respond to any threat at any school. We've learned a lot uh, over the past few years, and some of those hard lessons have learned from other case examples. And so basically that policy is we will go directly to that threat. We don't wait to set up a perimeter. Typically, we won't wait for backup units. We won't wait for EMS units. We will respond directly to that threat. But he said responding to a school setting may look different than a response to a possible street crime. Try to think about it a little bit differently. Is what, What's that going to be that important intervention? Is it a uh, mental health intervention? Is it a medical intervention? Is it a psychological intervention? Is it some sort of a law enforcement intervention with youth court? So we have a variety of different options, including the school counselors and other employees at the school district that are trained specifically to help us deal with those issues. Putty said Missoula is the envy of other large Montana cities when it comes to armed intruder trading through a company called Safariland. Brad Giffen and myself and uh, Rob Taylor are all Safariland adjunct instructors. And from that experience, which is a nationwide training company, from that experience, we know that Missoula is unique. Some people may feel that the schools aren't doing enough. Well, they're doing more than a lot of other places. The school resource officers are Jeff Lloyd at Big Sky, Mark Montego at Sentinel, and Jim Johnson at Hellgate.
You're pulled over for a traffic stop, and you have a concealed carry weapons permit. What's the best and safest way to let the officer know you have a permit and possibly a weapon in your vehicle? A Missoula County undersheriff Rich Marcelli said there are common sense rules to follow in any traffic stop. Be completely forthright and compliant, and 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 you know, ha- let him let him see your hands clearly, and then just be respectful to him and just say, officer, uh, you know, you may know this from the dispatch information, or you may not. But I just wanted you to know that I do have a concealed. A carry permit, and I do have either one on my person or somewhere in the vehicle. Marcelli said the driver can hand the concealed carry permit to the officer along with the license and proof of insurance. However, the officer needs to see where the driver's hands are at all times. My best recommendation would be to not do that beforehand, and the only reason why I say that is because I can envision over my career with people doing that. They're digging around in their glove box, and in that situation, obviously, he's not going to know what you have in there, and we can't clearly see your, your hands. So really, if you have it readily available and you can do that and all before he gets there, that's great. But if you can't, then I would just say keep your hands <laughs> up on the steering wheel. A Sacramento, California man was shot to death by police this week when they thought he had a weapon in his hand that turned out to be a cell phone. One of the owners of a coal-fired power plant in southeastern Montana has agreed to contribute $3 million to ease the surrounding community's expected transition away from coal. A Vista Corporation Spokane made the commitment in a filing with utilities regulators as a condition of its pending merger with Hydro One of Toronto. A Vista is one of six co-owners of the Coal Strip Power Plant, which employs several hundred people in the small community of Coal Strip. The Billings Gazette reported yesterday that the transition money from Avista follows a similar commitment from Puget Sound Energy, uh, pardon me, Energy last year for $10 million. Two of Coal Strip's four electricity generating units are slated to close no later than 2022. No closure date has been finalized for the remaining two units. And finally, wildlife officials say grizzly bears are beginning to wake up and depart from their winter dens across western Montana. The Missoulian reports Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks Department officials have cited bear tracks, noted activity on radio callers, and received a few eyewitness reports since the beginning of March. Our News Talk time is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. A mix of sun and clouds today with our high temperatures in the upper 40s, close to the 50-degree mark. Tonight, a wintry mix of rain and snow, overnight low temperatures in the mid-30s. A good chance of showers on Friday with highs in the low 50s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster, KECI 13.